which is organized in the jointly by SASNET, Swedish South Asian Studies Network at the university, and the department here at, uh, at the LTH. And we are so happy to have uh, two eminent researchers from uh, from Tiru uh, Jirapali in Tamil Nadu, South India, Paratidas University. Uh, Professor Tajudin, head of the Department of Microbiology, and uh, Dr. Uh, Shia Subramanian, director of the FICU Spectrum Environmental Research Center. Yes. Is that right? Yes, right. Okay. And I'm very. Uh, you, know, you pronounce my name correct. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we are very happy to have you here. And uh, and the, uh, the what I read about the uh, the uh, cleaning methods you use with micro is yeah. it's very interesting. So please please come and uh, tell us more. Mr. Okay. Faculty members of Lund uh, University, and uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Bob and I for uh, inviting us, and because of uh, his uh, efforts. Uh, and we are here to present and share our expertise on microalgae biotechnology. Uh, you know, microalgae is a photosynthetic plant. It is uh, available everywhere. Wherever you can go, if it is a sunlight and moisture is there, definitely you can get the microalgae growth. So that's why this uh, organism is uh, really cosmopolitan in uh, application. In addition to the biodiversity, it has uh, potential in almost all the fields. Whatever we want, we can get it from algae. So through this my lecture you can uh, understand that the potentials of algae in almost all the fields. So why uh, microalgae is uh, very advantageous? So if you see this point, uh, efficient biological system just like a uh, higher plants, uh, it photosynthesizes uh, and uh, it, uh, we, we, uh, you, unlike the technology we are developing in bacteria and fungi, we have to provide a defined uh, nutrient condition. Whereas if any technology developed in algae or uh, cyanobacteria or blue green algae, Sunlight and water is sufficient. If the product is not meant for human consumption, you can utilize the waste water or effluent water for uh, their biomass generation. So, such kind of uh, organism is very potential. And another important point is non vascular plants lacking the complex system like root, seed, branches, everything. So, here, uh, entire biomass can be harvested. For example, in the case of Jatropha, we are going to collect only seeds for the oil production. But the remaining part is waste. Whereas if you are developing the same same oil production technology using the algae, entire biomass can be harvested. There is no waste. And uh, because of this, uh, this uh, organism is again very potential in this. Uh, and uh, we can induce to produce commercially valuable compounds. This is again uh, another very important point. So if you want some heat shock protein, you can develop, uh, grow the algae, give some heat shock, definitely you can get the heat shock protein. If you want some specific, for example, we are working on the biodiesel production uh, for enhancing the lipid content, we grow the algae, give some stress. Stress is any kind of stress. For example, if it is a freshwater algae, if you add the marine water, it is a stress. If you are adding the effluent water, it is a stress. Any kind of stress, it induces the lipid production. So for developing the lipid uh, biodiesel technology, we have, to have two technologies. One is the rapid biomass production and the second one is the enhancing the repeat production by means of giving stress. The, we are not spending any money for giving the stress. Just uh, pH rise or if you are giving the high heat, you know in uh, India the temperature is very high. If you are putting in a uh, high light, again it is a stress. So we no cost we can induce the stress and get this biomass. And uh, another very very important point is this simple cell division. Unlike other algae, uh, it is a mitosis, meiosis, so many uh, uh, divisions are there. Reproductive modes, sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction are there. Here, one, here in a, only the amitotic division, that is efficient. One cell becomes two, two, just like a bacteria, it multiply in a very fast way. So uh, we are growing the coral algae in our race wave pond. Within four hours, we are getting the uh, another uh, growth, another log, uh, log phase growth, we are getting this one. So that's why this organism is really cosmopolitan distribution. Almost all the environment you can find this uh, uh, microalgae and cyanobacteria because there is no complication in the reproduction. So in unlike other uh, plants and uh, other higher uh, organisms, uh, some uh, seasons are very very important for their uh, uh, reproductive uh, nature. But here, a mitotic division, one cell becomes two, two becomes four like that. It is, uh, it is there is no complication in this. And as I said, we can grow in any kind of moisture, effluent water, 
uh, waste water, sea water, estuarine water, any water you can grow this algae very efficiently and effectively. Even if you are giving any uh, sewage in the water system, definitely you can find the blooming of algae. So I, I am running one project on uh, induce the artificially inducing the algal bloom in the raceway pond. So in this project, uh, I just add the, some sewage water in this, uh, then uh, you can find the bloom of algae in this uh, uh, raceway pond. So this biomass is required for the biodiesel production. And the biomass production is simple, laboratory intensive production, as well as uh, very simple uh, production is also there. So just to, in our country, we just uh, uh, plug the ground and then uh, make some polythene coverage and then add water, we can grow it. And uh, some uh, computerized uh, bioma, high biomass, uh, uh, very big, uh, every day we can harvest the tons of algae. So that type of uh, advanced uh, culture technology is also available for getting the biomass from the microalgae. So these are the applications. So if you see this slide, so it is basically the primary producers in any aquatic system, without this there is no primary consumers, there is no secondary consumers. This is occupying the base uh, of this ecosystem and uh, it is uh, used as a biofertilizer because uh, most of the cyanobacteria fixing the atmospheric nitrogen. So it uh, uh, fixes the atmospheric complex form of nitrogen uh, through the enzyme nitrogenase and it splits the nitro complex form of nitrogen into nitrate, nitrate and ammonia. So this simpler form can be easily utilized by the uh, agriculture crops. So in this way, in addition to this uh, nitrogen fixation, during the growth, it liberates some growth promoting substances like indoloacetic acid, zebralines like that. So this also enhances the uh, <coughs> growth of the agricultural crop and the food, the single cell protein. So, so you know, spinula is a, a very rich uh, protein content. You know, uh, if you are consuming the uh, many beef, mutton or chicken, maximum protein percentage is 25. Whereas in spinula, you know, maximum production is 71.5. So it is a scientific report. So such a rich protein content is present in some of the cyanobacteria and aqua feed. So since it is a primary producer, definitely it acts as aqua feed. So we developed one aqua feed technology from cyanobacteria and we transferred the technology to one industry at the cost of nearly 50 lakhs in Indian rupees. So this is again a very important aqua feed because it has the uh, innate antibacterial property in the organism. So if you are growing the algae in the, any aquifer culture tanks, there will not be any bacterial population. The water is uh, almost transparent. There is no bacterial contamination is there. Unlike the other uh, commercially available protein feed if you are applying, if the food is not taken by the fish, because of the protein content it invites the bacterial population. Whereas in this case, because the, our aqua feed having 51% of uh, protein as well as the antibacterial properties, it is uh, uh, gaining most importance in this. Then isotopically labeled the metabolites. Uh, this uh, work is going on and uh, you know some of the pigments are uh, fluorescent pigments. Now we are trying to use these pigments in uh, incorporating in the immunodiagnostic kits as a fluorescent marker because, because uh, Phycocyanin, phycocyanin is having the UV fluorescent capacity, auto fluorescent capacity. We can in include these uh, fluorescent uh, chemicals uh, in, the, in identifying the diseases uh, uh, or any components or any toxins present in the bloodstream. So this work is going on. And restriction enzymes, if you see Sigma in any uh, company, you can find the restriction enzymes from cyanobacteria, particularly Nostock species, uh, um, the Nanamina species. I, EVA 1, this is from the cyanobacteria because the cost of the production is very very less when compared to producing the uh, restriction engine through the fungus or bacteria. Then citrophores, the, again this is very very important, ion chelating substances. So it is medicinally highly important if any person having the higher dosage of ion in the bloodstream, uh, you need a doctor uh, injecting the diphroxamine, it is a kind of citrophore, diphroxamine. So this diphroxamine is abundant in cyanobacteria. So we have some initial family work on this. Then now we are working with the biofuels, particularly biodiesel production. We have the Indo-UK collaborative project uh, from UK as well as Indian government. Because of this ongoing project, we are uh, visited UK and now we are coming here. <coughs> then phycoblic proteins, the colorants, natural colorants. As I said, uh, phycocyanin, phycoerythrin are uh, very good uh, proteinaceous uh, colorant. It uh, has some important properties. We already 
developed one blue coloring technology from cyanobacteria and we transfer the technology to one industry. I'm going to show all these de de details in subsequent slides. Uh, then nanoparticle production. It's a very simple method of uh, producing nanoparticles. Uh, we published so many papers on nanoparticle production. Recently we published one paper in uh, Nature Scientific uh, Reports. Uh, last month we published the paper using the nanoparticle production. I'm going to show that paper also. Then toxins. So, in addition to all the beneficial aspects, cyanobacteria are some of the microbiome producing the toxins like neurotoxin, hepatotoxins, the toxins are really available um, uh, in cyanobacteria. But we have to identify which cyanobacteria is toxin, which is non toxic form. For this, we need the uh, good taxonomist to identify this one. Because you know, now the taxonomists are endangered species category. So, now uh, in our department, we are. Uh, uh, giving the interest, developing the interest among the students to come become the taxonomist in this field because we have to identify the what is the wealth of our cyanobacteria or microalgae present in our uh, Indian ecosystem. Then antibiotics, no doubt, if you treat any kind of extract to any clinical isolates, definitely you can get the hollow zone of inhibition, antibiotics are there and literature it is available. Then fatty acids. Some of the important, uh, medicinally important fatty acids like gamma linolenic acids is very high percentage in uh, uh, high pressure in cyanobacteria and high pressure in microalgae because it has a crucial role in contraction and repulsion of the heart muscle. So it is uh, medicinally highly important, it is abundant in high pressure in cyanobacteria. Vitamins, uh, when you compare to vitamin content of other uh, sources, uh, it is unimaginable content. If you just go to the Google and uh, just type the spirulina vitamin content, it is a very maximal percentage of uh, vitamins are percent. It is uncomparable with the other sources. Then bioremediation. <coughs> So we worked a lot on different type of bioremediation at the lab, scale, lab level. But uh, Dr. Shiva is uh, explaining in the really in the large scale at the industrial level. He's an expert on this. He will explain all those things. But what all the small, the smaller lab level works uh, be carried out. I'm going to explain on this one. And anti-fertility compound. Now recently it is gaining the importance of uh, developing the anti-fertility compounds from cyanobacteria. So one of the cyanobacteria we tested like Aceldoria villiae, it has the anti-fertility compounds. We, if we treat with the frog and uh, mice, uh, we found that 80% of the sperm reduction. So remaining 20%, uh, the sperms are not in a normal condition. Headless, uh, tailless, uh, single head with multiple tails, uh, multiple head with single tail, such kind of uh, things are there. So uh, the government of India is giving more importance to develop this uh, anti-fertility common because we are highly populated country, we have to suppress the uh, sperm content in human males. <coughs> this is, uh, these are all the different uh, applications, uh, now I am directly entering what to be had. So in addition to this, uh, CO2 sequestration. So these are all the very efficient uh, CO2 sequesters. For example, one acre of algal farm sequesters 400 metric tons of CO2 from the air. So by this way we can uh, reduce the global warming also. So if we are looking to the uh, biodiversity, biodiversity is very very important because we achieved so many things because of the taxonomic identification, isolation, purification and the establishment of germ plus some culture collections. From this culture collection we selected some species for application. So if we see this uh, taxonomic group uh, diatoms, they have uh, uh, very rich in uh, almost all the environment. It has uh, uh, the silica content in the seal, uh, cell wall. So we can generate some of the silica nanoparticles also for our application. And also to this, the, their reserve food material is the lipids. So this is necessary for uh, the biodiesel production. So now we are working on that. Then green algae, second one is green algae. There are nearly 8,000 species are known. Some of the green, green algae like chlorella, centesmus are commercially exploited at the largest scale level. Still work is in the record. And other three groups are like golden brown algae, prunisiophytes, used stigmatophytes. These are all only in the biodiversity identification level. There is no exploitation of these organisms because there is no proper culture collection centers for this kind of organism. So this is very important. <coughs> and the other group is called the blue algae. 
So we specialized on glucose uh, in particularly in marine cyanobacteria. So this is again uh, just like a bacteria, it is a prokaryotic organism. We can easily manipulate just like a bacteria and we can get whatever you want, we can develop from the microalgae. Uh, so cyanobacteria or blue green algae. So it has the phycocyanin and phycoerythrin pigment. Both pigment are uniform proportion, we can get the blue green color. If phycoerythrin is dominating, so uh, you can get the reddish color, pinkish color, different arrays of colors are there. So because of these colors, we can able to develop <coughs> the blue colorant or natural colorant technology uh, from cyanobacteria. So we are surveying uh, from the government funded projects uh, starting from Goa to Bhimri Pandam of Andhra Pradesh and then Andaman Islands, Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands, nearly 70% of the seashores and uh, freshwater environments we covered to develop uh, what, what are the wealth of uh, microalgae and cyanobacteria available in our country. So we are trying to write a monograph of completing all those things, remaining part of the country. <coughs> and if you see this uh, environment, so we have different types of uh, shores, uh, sandy seashores, uh, muddy seashore, and rocky seashore, and uh, uh, seashores occupied by completely coral reefs. So these are all different uh, kinds of seashores are there. So each shore is uh, important for a particular group of organisms. For example, in the case of, case of sandy shore, so it is not conducive for uh, the microalgal or cyanobacterial growth. We can collect only the planktonic form. Uh, 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 this is floating form. But whereas in this case of uh, rocky shore, you can get the benthic form, ecolithic form, so many forms. This is the uh, uh, correct uh, apt uh, environment for microalga and uh, cyanobacterial biodiversity as well as the distribution. And uh, this is the another very important uh, environment called uh, salt pans, uh, hypersaline environments. Uh, so you can see the luxuriant uh, cyanobacterial and uh, microalga growth. So it is a uh, rich of uh, uh, algae. Uh, you know, in fresh water there is no salinity. We call it as a zero PPT, parts per thousand. In sea water, 35 PPT of salinity. Whereas in this case of uh, salt water, it is more than 200 PPT of salinity. So we are giving importance to the organism because uh, if you are using this organism for uh, bioremediation of any effluent, then definitely this organism can survive. If you are using the fresh water organism or marine organism, sea water organism, it won't grow in the effluent. Whereas if you are using the hypersaline organism in any effluent water, waste water, it will very fastly growing because this already they are in a high stress. The effluent water is not a big stress for them. So they grow luxuriantly and because of the photosynthetic nature, it reduces the BOD, COD level and increases the oxygen content and also it liberates some growth promoting substances also, it degrades the pollutants also. So finally the waste water becomes good water in the sense you can utilize for the irrigation purpose. So such kind of potential organism is there. So we are using uh, this organism for bioremediation aspects. And uh, you can see how it looks like under the microscope from unicellular to flamantous colonial. Almost all the uh, morphological diversity is there. Because of this, uh, we need not uh, go for the biochemical level identification. Just by seeing the morphology itself, we can identify the algae, cyanobacteria. So it's such a vast, diverse uh, uh, morphology groups are there. And you can see this uh, the last four slides. Uh, these are all uh, same species, uh, but different coloration. I said it's a phycocyanin, phycoerythrin, different composition. We can get different arrays of colors. So because of this, it is very important to develop the natural colorants. Whatever color we want, we can directly extract this one. So whatever color we are now consuming as a chemical color, in long term it is carcinogenic. Okay, this is uh, nothing but the natural color phycocyanin, nothing but the protein. It is uh, nutritious uh, and no, no side effect. It is just like a protein. And it has the attractive color also. And these are some of the confocal microscopic view of uh, beautiful cyanobacteria we are uh, maintaining as uh, pure cultures in our uh, university. And uh, you can see this is the one Cenidesma uh, species. Uh, if it's a normal condition, you can't get these high globules. But if you are giving the stress, you can find the oil globules within the cytoplasm. So by, by stress, the organism induces the production of the oil globules. So this is needed for the uh, biodiesel production. Some of the diatoms we identified from the screen environments, it is the food, the reserve food material is the lipids. So this is very important for the biodiesel production. This is our germplasm collection we are maintaining in our university. 
So we have two facilities, national facility for marine cyanobacteria. So the, that is uh, um, developed by me uh, because my PhD work is on marine cyanobacteria. 400 strains now we are maintaining this one. So after uh, separating from this uh, center to microbiology department, I worked on freshwater microalgae and cyanobacteria by the government recognition of my work as well as the uh, facility available in my microbiology department. They sanctioned another uh, center, national repository for microalgae and cyanobacteria. Now the building construction, everything is going on for the establishment of the freshwater cyanobacteria and microalgae. So in addition to the isolation purification, we are working on the molecular taxonomy of uh, all the uh, isolates uh, which we are having. Uh, we have marine channels, uh, 16 SRNA, 18 SRNA, IPS region, sequence deposit in the gene bank. So far, uh, 500, now it is water one, 547 sequences we deposit in the gene bank. So we are going to <coughs> modify it and develop the barcode of each and every species which we are maintaining in our germ plasma collections. So these are the barcode we developed using the fungus by using the 18S, sorry, ITS region of the fungus by using the barcode of life from Canada and we make the barcode. Now we standardize the barcoding technology, now we are going to apply this technology to microalgae and cyanobacteria for barcode of all the isolates maintaining in our department. <coughs> so now coming to the application aspects, nanoparticle synthesis, we are developing uh, any kind of nanoparticles from uh, microalgae and cyanobacteria. So if you are uh, giving the silver, ni silver <coughs> chloride or silver nitrate, the organism utilizing nitrate as a nutrient source and the metallic silver is uh, uh, split into nanoparticles. So we published several papers on this uh, and interestingly <coughs> we use the gold nanoparticle synthesis, uh, gold chloride. We are using the one green algae cholesterol law and another one is the blue green algae uh, for medium. We are using these two different uh, organisms for uh, gold, uh, developing the gold nanoparticles. Surprisingly, <coughs> the cholesterol law, green algae producing the spherical nanoparticle and uh, far medium producing the triangular nanoparticle. So we tested each and every organism what kind of uh, shape structure we needed. We uh, uh, you select the different specific uh, microalgae or cyanobacteria, we can get the structure and different shapes. So this is the uh, one paper we published in colloidal surface B interfaces with the uh, impact factor of 4.28. Impact factor. In addition to this, we have developed uh, so many nanoparticle synthesis that are published in high impact factor journals. Uh, <coughs> and antimicrobial of fatty acid methyl esters. So this is the first of its kind in our country. So we developed the fatty acid methyl esters and uh, we treat against this uh, step RDS, E. coli, and the Canada albigans. We found that only the film having uh, the antibacterial effect. Uh, and this is a new report uh, we published in uh, RSC Advances. Uh, this is again on uh, uh, impact factor journal we published. And the FICO remediation, I am not going to talk much about this, but uh, uh, we isolated some uh, hypersaline cyanobacteria. The basic uh, background is the far medium tenure, wherein hypersaline cyanobacteria we used. So it uh, is efficient in lab <coughs> testing, it is efficient decal resistance, reducing the BOD, COD, and other elements, uh, increase the dissolved oxygen content, uh, increasing the nutrient content, uh, and acidic to neutral pH. So we they have initial test of the, some microalgae in different using different pH, pH 4 to pH 12. We inoculated the uh, cyanobacteria. After one week, we tested all the tubes. Surprisingly, all the tubes, whether it is a pH 4 or pH 12, yeah, are all coming to uh, 7.1 to 7.6. So pH is neutralized. So this is another very important characteristic. Uh, that's why this organism occupying very important uh, as biofertilizers. In India, there is the acidic soil and alkaline soil is there. Neutral soil is very good for, uh, the, for the crop development. So if you are applying this organism as a biofertilizer, so it neutralizes the soil and it enhances the agricultural productivity. So we published several papers in this uh, uh, organism and uh, this is uh, just I am showing how it uh, decolorizes the effluent. This is one paper mill effluent. Uh, using uh, the farm name tenu species, uh, you can get uh, uh, almost 99 percentage of color reduction. We observed. <coughs> now, this is another inc interesting paper we worked on this uh, uh, crude oil degradation. So, inoculated the cyanobacteria farm name tenu in microscopic observation. If you see this initially, the oil is in a globular structure because of the high surface tension. 
Then uh, in the course of time, the oil is uh, surface tension is uh, lost and the oil is degraded. So in the oil, there are two major components are there. One is uh, anthracene and uh, uh, naphthalene. These are the toxic components. We use the cyanobacteria in culture, specifically added, separately added the anthracene and naphthalene. And we found that anthracene is converted to anthracene diol, naphthalene is converted to naphthalene diol. So from toxic form to non-toxic form. So this paper we published in Biotechnological Letters. It is again a very good impact factor journal we published. And uh, degradation of the rhodamine day. Again, this rhodamine day is uh, 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 in uh, all the textile industries in Tripur. People are using this rhodamine day or day because of some of the good qualities. But in, it causes the carcinogenic and adaptogenic effects to the human beings. So we <coughs> use this particular cholesterol species and green algae. The rhodamine dye, if you are uh, treating with this, uh, the dye components break into several smaller components. Uh, these are all the non toxic. From toxic uh, components, so it breaks down and um, it becomes non toxic. The breakdown products are non toxic. Uh, and uh, this is the one, we, this is the rhodamine dye. This is the rhodamine dye mixed with the algae <coughs> and all the algae. So this paper we published again colloidal surface uh, uh, and interfaces. Uh, with a good impact factor, and this is the paper <coughs> we published uh, using the rhodomain day degradation uh, using the microalgae. And we published uh, several papers on the uh, uh, biodegradation aspects. And as I said, uh, it has uh, producing the growth promoting substances. Uh, we tested uh, the cyanobacterial extract with the, using the tissue culture medium. For example, this first one is the MS basal medium, which is routinely used for uh, developing the tissue culture. So, MS basal medium without adding any hormones. So, second one is MS basal medium. Usually, people, uh, scientists are adding the zebralin or endolacetic acid for their uh, shoot growth and root growth. The third one is uh, MS basal medium with 0.5% of the, the extracellular of the uh, extracellular product of the acidoria species, another cyanobacterium. Another last one is the 1% of the extracellular products extracted from the acidoria. You can see the growth, it is uncomparable growth. So because, because uh, it is uh, costless, so we are growing the algae, we are not disturbing the algae. We are collecting the uh, water, the culture medium from the algae. The culture medium is somewhat purified and uh, applied in the this medium, in this uh, tissue culture experiment. We got very interesting result. After 10 days, the cotton plug is thrown out because by the vigorous growth of the plantlets in the tissue culture medium. <coughs> so this is also being very important in agriculture technology. And we tested this different uh, cyanobacteria from farm medium, calotherix, nostoc, and cyconema. We got the same trend. So all the, uh, all the this proved that all the cyanobacteria are capable of producing the growth promoting substances which is helpful for the agricultural crops and in addition to the root promotion the food promotion also very good uh, in using the uh, cyanobacterial extracts <coughs> we published one paper in uh, journal of genetic engineering and biotechnology for uh, this uh, uh, hormone production by using the uh, cotton plant and uh, nematocytes this is again very important uh, nu uh, nuisance in banana growers so nematodes are uh, uh, blocking the root canals and it prevents the uh, uh, nutrient and uh, water circulation from ground to the plant. So uh, as a result, the uh, banana uh, tree is a damping of fall down. So because of the uh, non-availability of nutrient, for example, uh, this person here you can see this. Uh, the root is blocked by the nematode infection. This is the nematode and it infected this and blocked the uh, xylem and flowing vessels. So it prevents the water and nutrient sub circulation. So uh, the one uh, government uh, institute, uh, Banana Research Institute, uh, <coughs> and near Tirsirapalli, they yeah. approached me to get rid of this one. So I used some um, acidoria and mycosis species just to collect the pond water and uh, pour the pond water near the root of the banana plant tree. <coughs> some hundred percent uh, removal or uh, reduction of the nematodes. So I'm not treating anything, just to collect the pond water, two different pond water. One pond water is uh, blooming with the acidoria, another pond water is blooming with the mycocystis. I mixed it and uh, asked them to pour around the uh, root zone region. 
So they have found that 100% reduction. So we, we don't know what is the mechanism. Now we are working on what mechanism it prevents. Because it is a photosynthesis organ, nematodes are uh, anaerobic uh, organism. So the, if you are mixing the cyanobacteria, is the uh, grow inside the soil also. So the photosynthesis, they liberate some oxygen. So the oxygen is lethal. Just I imagine like that, now I am working on that. I am sorry, I am sorry. So this is the work, it's ongoing work. So we are working on that, uh, what is the mechanism of uh, uh, suppressing the nematode production. And this is a very important uh, work we are now working on that, uh, the anti-quorum sensing compounds from cyanobacteria. So in uh, aquaculture, uh, there are some uh, organisms are uh, developing the biofilm on the uh, surface of the fishes. And uh, because of the biofilm production, it, uh, it, uh, it causes the pathogenicity of, of, of the fishes. So, so people are adding the uh, antibiotics in a heavy quantities. Sometimes uh, there is anti uh, antibiotic resistant develop in this organism. So we are using uh, some of the cyanobacteria which uh, develop uh, which uh, inhibits the anti quorum sensing compound. Initially, one or two bacteria attached to the surface of the fishes. It uh, liberates some uh, quorum sensing signals uh, to attract the similar kind of bacteria and form the biofilm. Once they form the biofilm, they cause the pathogenicity. So, in this case, if you are applying the cyanobacteria as a feed, the cyanobacteria producing some anti quorum sensing compounds. It goes and binds with the quorum sensing signals released by the bacteria, so it prevents the biofilm formation, where thereby it prevents the infection also. So, this is another important work we worked with uh, different kind of cyanobacteria. This also you can see some, uh, we published one paper in Journal of Applied Phycology for uh, development of anti quorum sensing compounds from cyanobacteria and use some nanoparticles also to prevent the quorum sensing compound. This is again published in uh, uh, Biofoglin Journal. So it is again impact published. And the last part is the uh, biodiesel production. So because of the uh, biodiesel production, we have collaboration with the UK scientist from Swansea University as well as the Plymouth Marine Laboratory. And this is the data we got it from the internet. So you see the oil content of oil content in uh, liters per hectare area. If you are growing these plants in uh, per hectare area, you see the data. And whereas you can get more than one lakh liter of uh, uh, oil, we can get it from uh, the algae. If you are using the same one hectare area. And we tested different uh, cyanobacteria and microalgae in our laboratory. We found that Centesmus, uh, one of the species, Centesmus having maximum 30 percentage of the oil content without any giving stress, normal condition. If you are giving this stress, another 5 or 10 percent will be increased. So this is the data. And uh, uh, unsaturated fatty acids, if it is there, it uh, reduces the C10 number, NOx emission, all those things. So uh, we select the algae in such a way that um, it has uh, the saturated and the monosaturated fatty acids. Uh, if it is there, it is uh, good for biodiesel production. Otherwise, uh, if it is uh, unsaturated fatty acids, it uh, spoils again, the, it is not eco friendly. And uh, this is the way we are uh, developing the biodiesel production by this project. We have the mobile laboratory, we collect the specimens from the environment, uh, and in the uh, lab, we are isolation, purification, and a scale up from a uh, uh, petri plate to 100 ml flask, then uh, half king flask of uh, 2 liters, uh, and then 20 liters of the water can. We are growing the uh, same algae for multiplication, then uh, 300 liters of uh, Algae development. This is because of feeding the 35,000 uh, liter of, uh, capacity raised by pond. So gradually we increase the biomass to suit the 35 percent, uh, 35,000 liter of the uh, <coughs> raised by pond. And this is the 5,000 liter of the raised by pond we developed, we constructed this one, and this is the 35,000 liter. So from this 5,000 5, liter we transfer to that uh, 35,000 liter of water because we have to provide the optimal quantity of the inoculum, then only you can get the huge biomass, otherwise it struggles initially, sometimes it may not be grow. Yeah. So, so this is uh, how uh, the uh, raceway pond is working. So every day we are har harvesting uh, manually uh, more than uh, 20 kg of uh, algae. If you are 20 kg uh, biomass we prepared, so in dry weight, it is a uh, 2 kg, we can get it. 
try weight. So this is the uh, uh, active growth of uh, our cyanobacteria, I'm sorry, uh, Chlorella is growing on this. So this is uh, uh, the part of the Indo-UK project. So now it is in a normal condition. Now we are getting the RO result, uh, that is the affiliate uh, wastewater as well as the combination of the bacterial consortia that is developed by the Plymouth Marine Laboratory. We are mixing all those things. So as I said, we induce the algal blooms. So we use some effluent water in this, waste water in this, and it generates the bloom of natural blooms. So we have induced the natural blooms in the waste pond also. This technology is required for the huge biomass in a short time. So we are now going to pattern this technology, how to develop the artificial blooms in the natural environment. Okay, this is the closer view of this one. So this is a harvesting technology. And now we are uh, uh, erecting the uh, pulse magnetic field in this. So this is the kind of stress to enhance the lipid productivity. This is the world the first uh, unit erected in our uh, system. And this is how we are uh, collecting the biomass and uh, dry it, powder it in manually. And we are going for uh, uh, thermal liquefaction process as well as the transesterification process for the economic purpose. And these are all the technologies we developed uh, from the cyanobacteria. One is five percent. Five percent human production and beta lactamase enzyme production technology we developed and aquaculture production technology and we just developed the anti male compounds which affects the AIDS virus. So this is the lab level we tested. It inhibits the reverse transcriptase activity. So if any virus enter into the body, it induces the human system to develop the reverse transcriptase for the multiplication. So some of the virology professor, it is a collaborative work. We send the extract to virology department. They proved that our extract is inhibiting the reverse transcriptase enzyme production. So by this way, we can suppress the uh, virus. So this is, uh, we got some leaves on this one. So this is, you know, the blue colorant we developed from the uh, Cyanobacterium formidium valdirianum. That is one acetodia uh, species. Even though we can get uh, different shades of blue color. So this is formidium valdirianum, this is acetodia, and uh, this is the upper feed we developed. And just like rose milk, we can uh, take the blue milk in this. Uh, so now we identified one of the red colored cyanobacterium, which has the very rich phycoerythrin content. And we developed the red colored one. So this is the cake prepared by uh, red color and uh, phycocyanin and phycoerythrin. So if we mix the both color, we can get the brown color. <laughs> so likewise, we can get different arrays of color. So this is the technology now we are developing this one. And as I said, it has the fluorescent capacity, capacity autofluorescence in UV light. That's why we are trying to incorporate these compounds in immunodiagnostic kits to localize the as a marker. Now people are using the chemical dyes as well as the radioactive for uh, uh, tracing the uh, tracing as a marker. Now we, it is an eco-friendly one. So now we are thinking to involve in medical microbiology aspects. Now we have different colored uh, algae. So if we, uh, if we, we are having more color, different color algae, we generate more color and mixing the different combination of colors, we can get uh, almost all the colors, uh, thereby we completely eliminate the chemical synthetic colors which are uh, uh, carcinogenic. So we have some international collaboration with so many universities uh, of uh, different uh, countries. And uh, this is the one we, we are uh, establishing the national repository for freshwater microalgae. This is the one paper we published in Natural Scientific Groups. Recently, last 13, uh, April 13, we published this uh, paper, In Vitro Antibacterial Activity of Zinc Oxide Nano Dimium Doped uh, Particles Against ESPL Producers. So this is very important paper we published. And uh, this is the uh, last slide, my favorite organism, Procacus targetus in uh, dark field microscopy. Uh, if you have any doubts, clarifications, you can feel free to ask. Sorry for exceeding my time. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next speaker. Yeah. Oh. Picture you are seeing here, 
It's a site in Colombia. Where, uh, three years back, we did a project uh, demonstration plant in, in one of the uh, oil site, oil drilling sites of Pacific Rubias, in a company called the Pacific Rubias, the second biggest in Colombia. The first biggest is uh, Ecopetrol. Ecopetrol is inviting us now. And this is this is a site called Rubias, Pacific Rubias, very close to Venezuela border. So two, three years back, then, the company invited me to handle their uh, wastewater, but they have a problem with wastewater. They drill oil in the ground and they separate the crude oil. The water is the waste. They have about 20 of water. And water has three problems. A broad nutrients, two E. coli, coliform bacteria, and, uh, coliform bacteria, not E. coli, coliform bacteria, and traces of hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons. So we are supposed to handle the nutrients, reduce, strip, the, strip, strip all the nutrients, and reduce the coliform bacteria, and if possible, degrade or remove the traces of aromatic hydrocarbons. So these are the three objectives, and we signed an agreement. And uh, actually, they have been generating around 200,000 barrels a day. Now it has come to 300,000 barrels a day. So the government says, don't put it in the river without treatment. Actually, earlier they have been putting the mantle in a river that goes into the Caribbean Sea. Now the government stopped them because they have gone beyond 200,000 barrels a day. And they invited us. We have put uh, this plant at about 32 kg. So every day it will treat around 20,000 liters per day. And we have an online harvesting. This gentleman here is my. Uh, collaborator there, he is a medical man, medical uh, uh, trauma specialist, MD in medi medicine. But he has forgot medicine, he has joined for PhD in uh, St. Anand University in Bogota. I am his co guy, so he is completing his PhD in Alvin. I uh, have taken up this business very seriously. So, uh, if we have time, I will show you the results and all the later. It's, it's the introduction. And when it, this was, okay, this is my photo. Okay. So, this is our game, and you, you can see the, the we have our own uniform. I mean, uh, living in an oil oil field is very, very uh, uh, challenging. Yes. Oh, again, uh, something is coming. Uh, okay. Escape. Yeah. Oh, every time I got escape, I <laughs> skip all that. I've done some. I, I'll just keep all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and now what we have after successfully completing, so we did for six six months in uh, the, the Pacific Rubians oil drilling company, and we have successfully demonstrated our uh, efficiency. Now we are going to scale up. Now while while we are doing that, one of the uh, cities in uh, in in the Caribbean uh, coast, this is called as Puerto Colombia. So this 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 road goes to Barranquilla and this road goes to Cartagena. I think you can imagine where it is. So they have a sewage student plant here that is enlarged here to show the three three ponds. So we actually we have been given this this year these ponds because they, they are not doing very well. Now we are supposed to revive them with all the technology. We are doing it now. And in the meantime we also did a project with slaughterhouse, Camagüe slaughterhouse in Barranquilla, where they want us to grow in algae, algae in, uh, in slaughterhouse effluent and produce high calorific value. Biomass, so that they can make it into briquettes or burn it like coal. And uh, the results are really good. And you can see here, this is the brown coal, is 3.5 colorific value. And in the culture biomass in, in the effluent, in the it's 3.8. It's much better than the. Uh, that's, the that's the beauty of algae. If you grow them in effluent, in wastewater, in stress, they produce more oil and more colorific value. So we, we demonstrated it very successfully. Now we are scaling up. Uh, okay, what time are we to escape? This side is good. And uh, some, uh, last May I started on project in, in Iran, in Chabahar area, free zone. I stayed for a month to start this uh, railway pond, and each pond is about 100,000 liters. You can see it on Google Earth if you Google Algeran site. We have about four ponds now. Uh, we, are, we are now building more ponds. Uh, we have been given about 100 hectares of uh, desert area uh, leveling off. And we also developed uh, some harvesting uh, system. And the, uh, the idea is, to invite the industries nearby, oil industries, to give them, give them flue gas. So we are going to sponge flue gas to produce this donella biomass, to get the biomass in order to get beta carotene. And we also developed uh, some harvesting technology also. So this is our methodology. It's very simple. Lab feasibility for a week, for any effluent, we don't spend more than a week. Because what we do in the laboratory, in our opinion, has no relevance in the field, cannot extrapolate. 
we do whatever screening or anything you do, we, we want them to do what we want us to do only in the, in the large scale, in the pilot. So we do pilot here for three months. Now we don't call it as a pilot because if you say pilot for the industry, it, it sounds R&D. So they are not, they are not very happy with R&D. So we say small scale implementation. So the technology is already there, small scale. This, this pilot is very crucial. Once you do the pilot, scaling up is only multiplication. You, you, you generate all the data you want in, in the act, actual situation, the real condition. Only the volume is lesser, maybe 10,000 liter, 40,000 liter, and scaling up according to uh, final volume. So once it is through, so, so we scaling up is only multiplication. So we try every move for scaling, scaling up. I'll skip all this. And uh, press E here every time. Okay. What I normally do is, because I have a lot of slides, and you will not have time. So when the time is over, I will stop. So I make the conclusion straight away. Or, or <laughs> so that you can, you can stop me any time. Uh, yeah. So this is the conclusion. Conclusion is, well, what are the advantages of all the technology? As I already mentioned to you, pH correction is a major uh, application. You can think of and almost all the uh, industry affluence are uh, escape. Except the people, probably textile and uh, to dye, dye, dye making this, dye making this, they have they produce alkaline, a uh, Almost all other industries they, they make uh, acidic appliance. The best first thing you have to do is correct the pH. Then you do other uh, treatment uh, methods. So when correcting the pH, you spend a lot of uh, tons of caustic soda, and you end up in sludge. So that's a very good application. One while during pH correction, the algae can also remove color, also remove odor, sludge reduction in many cases. Bioding CO2 reduction, excellent because it's a photosynthetic organism, it evolves oxygen. So when you evolve oxygen, the bubble oxygen in the effluent, 50% of the problem is solved. So you, you end up in very low COD and POD. The, you normally you get about 90% reduction in COD and POD. The last digit will go. If you have 100, it will become 10. If you have 1000, it will become 100. Nutrient removal, include ammonia. Ammonia is a major headache. In, uh, uh, we have seen in, in Welsh water also in uh, UK. And also, uh, last time we, we went to Southwest Waters also. They have a problem with ammonia still. So, ammonia can be very good nutrient for algae. And better management of ROD chips for industries like textile and uh, other industries. They have a good technology for treatment. But when they recycle the water using reverse osmosis process, they end up in ROD reject, which is not able to manage. So, with algae technology, growing Algae in, in the highly saltish RO reject can reduce the biome, I mean, reduce the COD, I mean, uh, reduce the sludge, produce biomass, and you end up in no sludge. And there is always a reduction of cost, about 90% reduction of cost, because the industries will ask you, first thing is, they are happy with the technology, first thing they will ask you is, what's the cost? So we'll always say when the algal, when the algal technology works, because you are avoiding all these chemicals for every step. Definitely, there will be 90 percent reduction in the operation cost when compared to conventional system if it works. Then finally, of course, blue gas and carbon mitigation. So I think I can take two or three minutes to actually explain one industry because I don't want to <laughs> take more time. Yeah, just the, uh, uh, the cost reduction is include. Uh, is this include uh, the value of the biomass also? Or no, that's not. That's a, that's a. That's a. I mean, advantage that you, I mean, yeah. you buy, the, you sell the biomass, you get more money. Yeah. So what do they do this with the biomass in, in Iran, for example? Or Iran, we are extracting beta okay. because that neonatal is rich in the back. Now we know how to trigger the cutmination in the neonatal, and we are putting up more, more uh, uh, pressure points there. We have been given because supported by the government. It's a free zone, so free site, free free uh, area, free land. Free water, free electricity, no tax. These are the advantages. Huh? Full of bright sunlight throughout the year, mm -hmm. and no, with the, 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 the Persian Gulf area. That's it. So it's very close to India. So you can, within four hours, you can <laughs> and come back. If there is a problem. And so, can you go to mm -hmm. the industry? Okay, I'll skip all that. Let's skip, 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 skip. Okay. So I'll, I'll just explain that is one industry. Not I'm not going to go into going to all industries. This is an industry which invited us cost for collect, collect, correcting the pH, so 15 years back or 12 years back. So these ponds you see here now you don't see them. You don't, you don't, because these are all solar operating ponds that they have been using because they 
they, they, the water that is coming out is highly saltish, 40,000 milligram per liter, much above the sea water. The pH is around 1.2, 1.3, so highly acidic. The first thing they will do is, before they go for the solar operators, because when you have more uh, high salt water, you're not, you cannot use an RO. You cannot recycle, you have to evaporate. So in those days, solar operators or SCPs are recommended by the pollution report, shallow ponds. And they had about 11 ponds like this. Each pond is 1,000 square meters. So 11,000 square meter area evaporating about 40,000 liters per day and resulting in about 1 or 1 point by ton of sludge every day, including the lime sludge that they are going to add to correct the pH. So, so I, to cut short the story, so we have been invited and you can see the difference between this pond and this pond. So this pond was given to us, 1,000 square meter pond. So from the test tube to directly large scale, it's a long jump. But we were able to grow algae. When you grow algae, the pH increased about 99.5. .9. Then what we did was we removed half of the airplane to the next tank and added the fresh airplane to this till we reached the pH 6. Then allowed the algae to grow. So like that, it, it was done for an year. And we found that we could correct the pH. And also there was about 88% reduction in sludge. Then we went for the pilot, FK. This is a pilot So again, the company said uh, it takes three or four days or five days to carry the period. So it's not in the time scale of industry. More than a day, it's not acceptable. So you cannot do anything uh, beyond a day. So you have to do everything. You have to achieve everything in a day. So we thought, okay, the system is working very well. Only thing is, is missing is there is no mixing. And only the surface is getting the sunlight. So if we can assume, uh, assure that um, we are mixing a turbulence and also export to sunlight, I thought it will work. Perfectly. So we, we designed this uh, what we call a slope tank system. This tank can hold up to 4,000 4, liters or 4 km, and this is a 2 into 2 4 square meter surface area. It can be FRP, it can be RCC, or it can be asbestos, uh, whatever uh, material. It, it can be on uh, JST. So we have, we have, there is a pump here, there is a tube here with uh, equally uh, holes in the equal, equally uh, distance, and we pump the water into this. And the water flows on the surface, soap surface, as a thin film. It gets exposed, it's, it's, it's agitated, I mean, uh, turbulence is created, aerated, and also exposed to sunlight. So we could correct the pH with Kennedy, this setup. So from the test tube, we went to the large scale, and we learned it is not a good thing because it's still not a technology, it's a technique. That's a different between technique and technology. Technology should be within a time scale. Then we came back to this pilot. The pilot we did for a year and we could correct the pH within a day, light hours, and go went for the scaling up. So, this uh, video, I don't know whether it works or not. But do you want to? Work, don't worry. So we were scaled up uh, uh, from the small scale, we just multiplied mm -hmm. a thousand times. Scaled up now, the scaled up plant was uh, actually in 2006 September, it's running for the last almost 10 years, and there is no sludge. Instantaneously, the pH is corrected, and we always retain some uh, buffer volume of uh, uh, water here. It's about 1200 kL uh, storage tank, it can hold about uh, one month of uh, air. And there is a roof here, and there is another. Uh, some surface area which which was 3000 square meter plus 1000 square meter on the roof evaporating the water. Earlier it was 11000 square meter, now it is reduced to uh, 4000 square meter evaporating the water without any sludge. So the algae that they put uh, I think you can see it's okay. The roof has 1000 square meter area, the, 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 what, the tank here is 1200 km. And there is a header here drawing water from the bottom, and this is again a surface area of evaporating. 3000 to 1000, 4000 square meter area. You can see the airplane is very transparent, brownish green. It will be dark, actually, rather than will be. And pH is always 7. So, instantaneous correction of the pH, no sludge formation, and whatever algae that is produced, it is taken for three products. That this is how it looks. The, the whole area is released. Now, 75% of the area is released. Normally, when people talk about algae technology, they will ask, it will take more, more space. No, this is the first project we proved that algal technology actually requires only small space. 
than the conventional technology. And and this lake is actually maintained by this uh, industry. They okay goes for the algae goes for uh, compost and then two products the aquaculture feeder. Uh, fertilizer and uh, Tata tea has given them a very good order. They are not able to supply in fact. Uh, this is how it looks, aquaculture fee, aquaculture fee. If you put the aquaculture fee, it becomes more transparent and the more DO is very high and uh, fish become more happier. The productivity is very high. It has been trained, I mean, tested all over India from Kashmir to Kanye And this is how it looks. Uh, what used to be a headache for the industry is a tried. Now they have put up solar panels over this roof to run the motor. That's the only energy input. So there is none. No, uh, I have some picture. I cannot show you now. It's already too late. Uh, this is the table which any industry would like to see. The cost benefit, you know, this last one. If you say you are saving at least one pound a day or one krona a day, they will be happy. Mm -hmm. And how the technology if it works, you can satisfactorily say, com comfortably say, you can reduce 90% of cost when you compare to the other system. So, following this success, we went into lot of projects, in, there were 20 projects in India and uh, some projects in Colombia and uh, right now we are signing agreement in Welsh waters and, uh, in, uh, in Swansea, they are agreeing. I think within a month we will be signing to put up a demo plant on uh, their uh, sites in, uh, in Swansea. So what kind of waste water is it? Sewage water, domestic okay. sewage. Mm. It's very easy to take because you are, you are dealt with very hostile, acidic, highly saltish environment. And, uh, uh, Sewage is a comfortable medium for the to grow. So can I stop with this because I have 20 more industries if you have patience, <laughs> if you want to listen to. I can at least uh, go to the latest industry that we have, we have done. Two months back we scaled up. I just show you only one picture and close. Yes, this is what we have done. This is an industry latest, latest one. A lot, three, month, three months back we scaled up. It's in India. A, it's a, in India. <coughs> It is a dye, it's a uh, acrylon fiber, nylon fiber manufacturer, very big company. Anything to do with nylon here is this company. And they have online dye, what's called a gel dye. Uh, gel dye has a lot of antimicrobials. So when you release the effluent into the ethyl system, it kills the bacteria. It takes 40 days to recover. And the color is also not, they are not able to remove. They, they came to us asking, can you do with algae? So we demonstrated very effectively. We did two pilots in that. 5,000 and also 40,000 and then scaled up. So in the scale up plant we have a 50 cubic meter uh, storage tank and about 550 cubic meter vertical, 3 meter deep under 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 water, uh, under, under uh, uh, below the uh, level and we have a harvesting to uh, to take the biomass back and also aeration tanks. So now we have a very good result, we are getting excellent result, rural biomass and actually we are adding, uh, every hour we are adding 3,000 liters and removing 3,000 liters. That's all, it's a very dynamic system. And the biomass is returned back. Every time we take 1,000, uh, 3,000 liters, then we settle and then take the biomass back. See the biomass growth is very good and uh, you can see the control, acidic, very dark, and the tree ones almost transparent. The green color is only because of the algae. The color is removed completely, it is detoxified. Not all. Now they are using it for uh, growing plants, their garden, in the, in the industry. So this is our latest um, so, I mean, project. Uh, I think I can stop with this and ask, ask our question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very impressive. Yeah, very impressive, very interesting. But I'm sorry, I could not. Yeah, but we understand. A lot of flights and uh, uh, initial hiccups and uh, it made me very uh, nervous. <laughs> okay. yes. could, could you say something uh, in general about the uh, market development in uh, this field? Is, is India leading this? Yes, India yeah. definitely leading because we have uh, demonstrated in a number of industries. Uh, but we are not entering the pattern industry support. Sorry, pepper, pepper industry, and also distillery. These yeah. are the two places where we are not entered. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't like to go, they are not invited us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and probably pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of things in India, pharmaceutical. They, they want to avoid all this. Mm -hmm. You can take care of the pollution report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even Colombia that happens. Colombia, we are going to sign an agreement uh, next month. 
where we are going to have, uh, you know, the ex situ companies. There are a lot of ex situ companies in Colombia. They take the buy, I mean, plane from the industries, then get the money. They go to the uh, common different area, they don't treat, they then discharge. And for discharging, they pay a lot of fine to the government. So the fine, everything is collected from the factory. What we said, told them was, first meeting we had, okay, you do whatever you want, but we will put up all the We will reduce the POD, COD, all the things. So that fine is reduced. So you get a lot of money. <coughs> you have a percentage off in that. So they agreed. So next month I am going there to sign an agreement and put up uh, one of the plants in Barranquilla and probably um, exit to, uh, to help the uh, treatment plant hmm. to save money so that they give us some money. Probably it boils down to that. Hmm. So can this and uh, India, it's very, the awareness is very good. Now we are, uh, uh, most of the police agencies are convinced of this because Every state has police and road board, we have to convince. It's not like if you have a central agency convince. No, every state has its own rules and regulations. And uh, we have convinced from Agarashtra, we have convinced from Gujarat, we have convinced from Nadu. Uh, we are entering into other uh, states. And uh, But most of the time, the uh, police and report says, whatever you do, we want the results. We are not bothered about what you are doing. So we, we want the results. That's what mostly people do. But if you say you are eliminating ME um, equipments which are very expensive and the pollution reward gets a lot of cuts, money in that, they are very, I mean, very, very much worried about it. Because when you have a technology and the problem is solved, the pollution board cannot make money. So mm. this, this is what, <laughs> how it's going. So we have to fight with all this. It's not like that everything is smooth. It's not the something. No, but I was thinking you have, you have a lot of companies who are doing anaerobic and aerobic treatment. Yes, they, what treatments. we normally do is... No, uh, just, uh, okay. So, can this algal treatment be uh, can be used to replace those? No, no, that's and what I'm trying. I know what you're asking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> normally, when, you, when we go to any industry, mm -hmm. this is, the, the, the previous industry is different. It is completely algal. Mm -hmm. But all other industries, where we have gone, we don't go with the design. We do a screening and go with the results and visit the facility. They already have an existing plant which is already doing very well, but they have some problems. So we get data from all, all, the, channel, the, all the sources and then find out where we can intervene with the algal system so that the whole thing is improved. So existing component system is improved by proper intervention of, with algae. Where we intervene, how we modify, and existing tanks will be modified. We don't put up any new tanks. That is our design. So the design is customized. So the customized design, the people are very happy. And you say demolish everything and put this. No, it will not work. I know, when you started asking, I know what okay. you want to do. <laughs> no, but maybe you don't need those two, those steps, what, they, what is being used. Maybe algal can solve that. Well, not in all cases, not in all cases. No, not, you know, that's what my question Even if you get 10%, 20% success in this, mm. you are saving. Yes, of course. It's huge in this industrial scale. It may not be 100%. Mm. Even 40% they are happy. Mm. They are 40% chemical, they are saving. Yes, of course. Uh, of course, we are bothered about environment. Industry is not bothered about environment. Money. Mm -hmm. sure. But finally it helps environment. That's, we are satisfied with that. <laughs> we also get some money. Of course, that's very important. Right there. Yes. And uh, what is the uh, mechanism of pH adjustment? Ah, uh, okay. This has been asked by many. Uh, the thing is, um, you see, the uh, in the acidic effluent, there will be carbon dioxide. It will be free carbon dioxide, carbonic acid. So when, when, the, when the organs start, start photosynthesizing, we take away the carbon dioxide. And then it results in uh, um, uh, getting its own right. water. And the technology is like that. I mean, we don't grow algae in the acidic effluent. But you had some example of yes. that. Yes, what we do is, I not, I mean, reveal many things. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, not, I not even told you what organism I used. No. <laughs> what we do is, in, in the first experiment, we used sodium hydroxide in Chile to raise the pH to 6. That's comfortable for the algae. Allowed the algae to grow. It raised the pH to 9.95. Then I told you, we removed half of it and added uh, 
compressed mm -hmm. medium till it reached 5, from I mean 6, which is compared to the algae. So again you need not add. To start, you add little amount of sodium metals. Right? Once you reach a level, you maintain that using algal technology. That is the uh, tactics we use. Yeah. So many things I am not explaining. So of course. We have time. We will start a company here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweden is not the right country for <laughs> 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 I, I was thinking about the nematode, um, uh, <laughs> nematode innovation and also the, the stimulation of the growth that you show for the tomato plants. Uh, is it uh, commercial applications from, from that result? No, actually we proved in the uh, initial scale stage, yeah. but in the nematode. So we are now working on what is the mechanism of uh, Inhibition of nematodes. So yeah. this work is going on with the collaboration with the, the Manana Research Center. So what is the other one? Yeah, it was uh, the stimulation of the growth of, of the roots and the plant. Yeah, the uh, growth promoting. Yeah. So this is not yet commercialized. Right. So we are um, working with patent. Yeah. What are the things, uh, how we extract the first steps we are uh, now uh, making down. So now uh, we stop publication, now we start uh, patenting all those things. Okay, yeah, because it's, yeah. As this, it looks quite no, promising. Yes. Can so you, uh, can you delete this? A <laughs> lot of money <laughs> no, in uh, purchasing the growth. We tested the, the content, uh, exhaustive content. It resembles exactly the indolacetic acid. We <coughs> checked with the yeah. FDIR uh, spectrum. The same spectrum uh, matches with the uh, indolacetic acid. So we prove that it is into a stick as it. So now we are uh, making the pattern model of the kind of uh, algae for uh, soil reproduction, I was saying. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If the, as I told you, in the yeah. Kamagwe, uh, it's hot air house plant, and when you blow in Kamagwe, it's hot air house, the, it produces uh, much better, better than brown coal, 3.8 color brand. Yeah, color. You have a lot of advantage. In fact, you can take it for bucketing and improving mm -hmm. and make a coal substitute. I think coal substitute uh, as algae as a coal substitute has a very good market in uh, Europe. Mm. And uh, right now it is uh, 90 ton, I mean 90 euros per ton. That will increase definitely in, in, in Europe. Yeah, it's in the market, you know, export the market. With, with, that idea, with that idea only we started in Iran actually. We, we never thought we would be growing Dunalina. We thought we will be growing a mixture of microalgae which can be harvested and dried and sold as a coal substitute in Europe. That's how we started uh, doing and uh, calculating the economics. Later we found that it is supporting excellent growth of, we are getting about 15 gram per litre. More than that, in fact. Huge. Cannot get more than a gram, but in the Iranian condition, uh, water and uh, how we are getting water is again an advantage. Mm -hmm. It comes in a canal, you know, the, the Iran, uh, long back. They wanted to make Chabahar as a like a like a water city, water city, waterway, city with waterway. So they, they dug a canal about four kilometers and they stopped it. So this canal brings the water. So now it's not flowing. Whenever there is high tide, there is some movement. And there is low tide, there is some movement back. Otherwise it's almost stagnant. It evaporates in the in the bright sun and heat. And you, you get directly if you pump from the canal, you get sixty to seventy parts per thousand. That is highly suitable for uh, dunalilla growth. You don't uh, need to add any salt. That's mm -hmm. an advantage. So, if you don't harvest even uh, uh, one, for one day, completely it's, it's, it saturates the whole thing at, uh, you, you think, more than uh, 25 grams per litre mm -hmm. harvesting. But this would be very good for treating municipal waters in India, these mega cities. Definitely, uh, because um, uh, there, 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 in, in the India, the so municipal, uh, the sewage is owned by the government. Yeah, that's Whereas the industry is owned by the private. <laughs> we, I'll be very happy to deal with the private rather than the government. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's not like it's not easy at all. No, I'll no. tell you a story, two minutes. Uh, three months back, mm -hmm. I was called by a, uh, a Swedish uh, engineer, a lady. Uh, I was in Chennai. She called me, uh, so from him, uh, we are in Chennai, we have an office in a place nearby, my office. We are supposed to uh, give a proposal for cleaning up Adaya River, you know, sewage uh, river, and uh, I thought your technology will work. They have, uh, it's a Swedish company, they have, uh, having uh, branches all over the world. So that our government invited this company 
and they have given them a space, a free space and all that. They have been there for one year to survey. And this lady called me one day, we'll go around, I'll show you my place where I'm there for 40, 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> and when I entered the office, it, it, all French ladies sitting. I, I was checking my passport. Uh, <laughs> and this lady told me, your technology will work. We'll go around and, uh, and, uh, and uh, see the sites where we can put up. So we went around the whole day and then identified some five or six sites. And then uh, after uh, three or four days, I gave complete diagram and all that to her. It was support, submitted to government. That's all. It's gone. Mm -hmm. So now it goes as a Swedish technology. Not bad. Somebody would have come from Spain. I mean, so Sweden, Spain, 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 Sweden, <laughs> and Spain. And the chief, chief uh, recognized our work, but not the government. No, that's true. So, that is more, more max. Yeah. And the, and the office is very, very near to my office. <laughs> they are there for a year. World is very big now. I don't when it's very small. It is small. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to ask one question. Yes. <laughs> Most of the applications, uh, you, you you just how do you get, for example, an algae have antiviral. Properties. How? What? What is? What no, is I it? Don't deal with the, I don't deal with. Uh, How? It, huh? No, no. I think. No, I, 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 yeah, you. I mean, it is all. No, no, I, I, a very narrow field. No, but still. The country is only that. So. But still. Uh, so I, normally, I'm, I'm you are doing the extract uh, uh, plants and algae, put it into all kind of systems, <laughs> <laughs> and see any any plant will have anti yes. uh, secondary metabolites. Any plant. Yes. It is a concentration, it is a viability, how you are going to take it to the drugs actually, you have to fight with the uh, big players in the drug market and anti-cancer drugs, people have already hundreds of very good uh, uh, compounds which are not released. They will not release immediately. Whatever they have released now, no, no. unless they make money, they will not release. So, when you do something on anti-viral and all that, you will be nowhere. In India, for the last 50 years, how many drugs we have in uh, release? Nothing. No, the question was, question was... You are right, but when you are when you, when you devise an application, okay. where do you start? I mean, how... They, they are, you, you have a belief in algae that it will do or everything? <laughs> or or a, yeah. something like that? Or? <laughs> there is no machinery, <laughs> unimportant <laughs> So That's why I said, any plant, plant, plant has some secondary plant plant plant. Plant. But we have to identify exactly which algae is having the uh, antiviral. Okay. Okay. So we have a collaboration with the Virology Institute at Tharumani uh, Chennai. Uh -huh. You know, Dr. S.P. Tevarajan, uh, he was the uh, Vice Chancellor of Madras University. So he worked uh, with our, uh, we have a collaboration. Uh -huh. So he asked several uh, extracts of marine cyanobacteria. We sent uh, nearly 10 extracts. From this 10 extract, he identified that on uh -huh. the formidable multi-random what we used to use for uh, the bioremediation of peptidyl uh, this effluent. Uh, this organism mm -hmm. only has the anti-AIDS uh, virus uh, effect. Mm -hmm. Because it's, he, but, is, but, he is but, but tested the, with the... the origin, origin is... Uh, 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 maybe yes. there is. Or yeah, initially, is any, yeah, initially uh -huh, okay. we have a suspicion. Okay. Then since he is a virology professor, mm -hmm. he wanted to test our uh, extract. Mm -hmm. So we sent nearly mm -hmm. 10 extract. Mm -hmm. From this one extract showing the anti reverse transcriptase sorry uh, mm -hmm. activity so it suppresses the yeah, yeah. reverse oh. transcriptase production mm -hmm. so he uh, showed all the results then one company we got the mou with this but at the time he uh, was a viral virology professor then he later became the vice chancellor the infection is cut off communication he was busy with the administration it is an off the way it is uh, lying mm -hmm. but you uh, no, your point. You start from a suspicion. Yeah, suspicion. Only suspicion. Yes, very big team. They are working on all aspects of algal application. Very big. Algae is a simple organism, no? Natural. Natural algae. So. We have already cut off. Okay. Yeah. I think it's time to. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So interesting.